Welcome to what I can guarantee will be the last power bank video you will ever watch. And please remember two things. One, this is not a power bank. And two, this video is not sponsored. Here's how you know. I am going to directly compare this to the power banks that are on the market currently, and I'm also going to directly pip it against the perfect example of a conventional Victron system. But here's the real hook. I'm gonna tell you the one reason you're not going to choose the LPS2. I have a promise, a promise to never show you another single power bank ever on my channel because of this. Now you may think me stupid. You may say, why would you cut off such an easy source of revenue? Sounds like a golf. All you have to do is make a video and they basically send you a free power bank worth thousands of pounds. And the reason is I'm no longer suggesting that that is the correct route. It was up until now and everything I've said up until now is truthful. But if anybody came to me now and said, what about this, this, this or this? All I would want to say is go buy that. I am refusing to accept that this should be in the class of power banks. It has a 3000 watt inverter, which will allow a peak of 5000 watts. It has built inside it a 400 watt B2B. It has the ability for 400 watts of solar input. It has a high output 12 volt supply. So it looks like a duck and it walks and it talks like a duck, but this is closer to a hippo than it is in fact a duck. Let's take a little look around the unit. Now, what I will say is, in fact, there isn't all that much to see. And I like that. While some of the other power banks basically look like toys and they belong on the shelf at Toys R Us, this is so utilitarian looking, it looks like the upcoming competitors of Robot Wars have put this thing together. It's absolutely insane. It looks so good. It looks strong. This looks like you could throw it all down that hill, pick it up and use it. On the front of the unit, this is basically the only user-friendly thing you will find, and that is you have the ability to plug something straight into the front of the unit. The rest of it is not user-friendly whatsoever from a plug-and-play point of view. There's no USBs on the front of this. This isn't a power bank that you put in the corner. This is something that you bury in a cupboard and totally forget about it, and you just know when you come to flick a switch, it's going to work. This here is a built-in RCD unit. So what does that mean? That means that you don't have to fit any kind of external fuse board if you wanted a 240 volt circuit. The RCD allows full protection for the 230 circuits. So here we have the 230 input and the 230 output. The 230 input comes with a manufactured fitting and if you can wire a plug, you are perfectly capable of fitting the output. Now from there, all you would do in a daisy chain formation is go to as many sockets as you want all over the van as long as it starts from here, fully protected from any fault, that couldn't be any easier. I have tested many, seen more, and been offered pretty much all of the power banks available. And I'm gonna say this, they are good. The ability to take all of that power and all of them components in that box and make it affordable for the likes of campers and people that are interested in leisure is absolutely fantastic. But every single one that I've seen seems to be missing a component. So for example, quite a lot of the quintessential power banks do not in fact take a decent charge off of the cigarette lighter. Many don't offer B2B, DC to DC charging. This, however, does. Inside there, already built in, just literally connect it up, positive and negative from your vehicle's battery, is in fact a 400 watt B2B. That's about 33 amps. I know we're talking about power banks, that already outshines a single Victron Orion Smart. And then you have a massive range of power banks that don't seem to have a high output on the 12 volt. Why do we need a high output on the 12 volt in the van world? Well, that might be something as simple as running a diesel heater. Take all of the Jackery Explorers, take what I believe is all of the Deltas from EcoFlow. None of them have the ability to run anything over 10 amp, basically anything that a cigarette lighter can offer you. That's where the Blue Etty AC200 Max did in fact shine because that had a 30 amp output regulated on the 12 volts. So you could basically run a whole van off of that. But what the Bluetti lacked in was the ability to charge it while you're driving. Yes, you could charge it via cigarette lighter, but here in the UK, when we're suffering with the lack of solar, like on a day like today in the middle of July, and I've got the awning out in case it's gonna rain, we want the ability to charge it while we're driving a little bit more than 100 watts. It would take a solar input of 900 watts, which is quite large, and you could charge it via solar and AC, 240 volts at the same time. But what you couldn't do is charge 
gadget via your cigarette lighter and solar at the same time. You would physically have to press a button and choose between the two. And that was a bit of a shame. But guess what? The Clayton is once again a different story. You can take those combined wattages, so 400 watts from the B2B and potentially up to 400 watts from your solar input, 800 watts while you're driving, and that was my point. When I initially said that no one power bank has it all, that's what I was delving into. The fact that they've all got fantastic elements. One might have a high output on the 12 volt, but will only allow you to charge it via a cigarette lighter while you're driving. Not ideal. They all have fantastic elements. Just so happens that not one has all of those elements. How much is the output on this? 180. 180 amps. It has a 12 volt output of 180 amps. That's insane, it doesn't even make sense. So what about the Goal Zero 3000X? Do you remember when I installed one of them in my silver van? That was by far the best power bank I've ever seen. That had a 30 amp regulated output. It had the ability to install an add-on DC-DC charger, which was about 600 watts. Now that is a fair amount of power coming from your vehicle's battery. It had a decent battery capacity inside it and it never skipped a beat. But there was one issue with the Goal Zero and that was installation. So it was in fact a power bank and you do just plug in leads into the front of it. That side of things was nice and simple, but we had a box about this big. The Goal Zero is a lovely compact size. But when you started adding the wires to the front of it and to the back of it, the box itself, the space that it needed to be in, ended up being so big, so big that I ended up having to cut a hole in the panel in the back of the cupboard to allow the big brick, which was part of the B2B charger, to be installed into the back of the unit. This, for example, is the 230 volt cable that goes in. That is quite a sizable blocky piece of plastic. Now, if they expected us to fit this on the back like that or on the front like that, what starts as a unit that's about 500 mil long ends up being about 600 mil long. Plus you need space for this cable to bend because you don't really want to bend it right at a right angle. But guess where Clayton want us to put it? There. It is taken up in what a plumber would call an alcove here, a notch, so that when we put our wire down the side of the unit, it's taking up literally the space of a wire. How amazing is that? Why isn't anyone else doing this. And it's the same with this. So here is our DC DC in, which is where we will put our B2B. It's as simple as that. You go from your battery, you put a ring terminal on your positive, you put a ring terminal on your negative. That is gonna allow them wires to come down here and then off to wherever they're going, down through the floor, down through the wall, whatever. The distance that you're adding to the unit itself is only the thickness of the wire. That is simple. That is so, so simple, yet so effective, which means it can go in a cupboard anywhere that has got space for that plus 15 mil tolerance. This isn't built for us. This isn't built for the leisure industry. These are used in national grid vans, in refrigeration vans that deliver your groceries. These are used in a commercial sense. It just so happens that they have accidentally built the perfect power bank, even though it's definitely not a power bank. If you were listening at the start in the intro, you would have heard me say that this has a solar intake capability are 400 watts. That is the only figure I see that some people will question. I know some of you guys out there are really heavily reliant on solar. You love the whole renewable thing. You're saving the planet and I appreciate all of that. And I know some of you will say, well, I have an array of 550 watts. 400 watts just isn't enough. What a waste of energy. But I have this to ask you. How often do you see a yield coming in of over 400 watts. You may have 600 watts on your roof, and what that will do is maximize your potential of bringing in about four or 500 watts. I would much prefer to see maxing out my solar input. So yes, I've got 500 watts on the roof, but I'm only capable of bringing in 400 watts. Trading that for the ability to charge at a faster rate while driving. The solar for me is a nice little addition it keeps the beer cold when you're not camping. Every time I go back to the van, I know that the battery is gonna be nice and topped up. But between me and you, we get our power when we're driving. When that alternator's turning and that engine's running, you can recharge your battery 
like that. This unit has a battery capacity of 160 amp hours, but how much of that battery can you truly access? Which leaves me once again praising the whole Clayton ethic. They do not leave anything to the imagination. If you go on the website, it will clearly state that this does have a capacity of 160 amp hours, but accessible power is about 134 amp hours. They've spelled it out for us because we know that you shouldn't take a lithium battery down to 0%. Well, you can with this because in fact it has that buffer in reserve it's 160 amp hours but accessible full use is 134 amp hours been looking at my table haven't you this whole time while i've been talking about the clayton lps2 you've been looking at my table and you're gonna leave a comment this in fact is the tire table from tailgater it has been my best friend when it comes to a camping setup for years i've actually previously made two different videos on it i implore everybody to go out and get one well in fact you shouldn't buy one of these you should pre-order one of these Yes, that is the UAO branded tire table. Months and months of research and development and fine tuning has bought us this. It's in the final stages and it is everything that I dreamed of it being. It is handmade here in the UK. It is aluminium. It will be finished in a powder coat. The tabletop itself is laser cut. It has these crafty little notches in them that are ready to take these. These hooks will allow us to use it in any which way we desire. You could hang your utensils from this. You could hang your tea towel from this, your kitchen roll. You could even, after a muddy walk, wash your trainers out and hang your trainers from these. And when I've got them in my hand and I can show you the video, that is gonna be here or here. I think it's there. This for me is a dream come true, a product with my brand on it, a brand that we have all built together. So I am absolutely humbled. If you want to place a pre-order, the link will be in the description. The final nail in the coffin for all power banks, the aftercare. Have you ever tried to contact the supplier of your power bank with a technical question or a warranty claim? Not easy. Any guesses where Clayton Power UK are based? Yeah, the clue is definitely in the title. They are here in the UK. Check out this footage where I basically prank Clayton Power headquarters. Hopefully this pans out and hopefully I don't get in trouble. So Clayton Power UK, simple as that. How, that couldn't be any more obvious. Clayton Power UK comes up, top hit, no fake phone numbers, that kind of thing. Hit the call button. Welcome to Clayton Power UK. Please select from the following options. Press one for general inquiries. Press two for sales. Press three for after sales support. Or press okay. call for accounts. Oh, I'm on hold. Afternoon, Clayton Power Support, Neil speaking. Uh, sorry, can I clarify that's Clayton Power Support? Yes, it is, yeah. Clayton Power Support, yeah. Sorry, wrong number. I panicked. That whole phone call was 30 seconds long and I was talking to someone that could offer me advice on a potential problem. Enough said. This is the LPS2 3000 and this is the biggest version they make. They do in fact make smaller models and as the models decrease in size and cost, so too does the charging capabilities and the MPPT and things like that. That during my rigorous research in the last scene where I was talking about the smaller units may have smaller charging capabilities, I realized that this unit in fact has 500 watts B2B. Oh, shit. Every time I've said 400 watts DC DC charging, add 100 watts and you can have that on me. 3699, that is at the upper end of power bank money. But please remember, this is not a power bank. If you were going to compare all of the units that are inside that to a Victron system, you're probably looking at closer to half. I am done destroying power banks and it's time to take this unit down to Ape Adventure Vans where I am going to directly compare it to a Victron conventional system. Now you may say, well, don't bother. The Victron's already got you beat because in there is 160 amp hours and 134 amp hours of usable energy. You've already told us that. And with a Victron system, you can make it as big as you like. Well, guess what? I totally forgot to tell you that this is in fact expandable. Also failed to mention that there is an additional 600 watt B2B. So you can take your 400 watt B2B, which is already built inside it, and you can add an additional 600 watts. That's a thousand watts of 
B2B alternator charging while you're driving. For an additional 33 pounds or something stupid like that, you can buy a mounting bracket. You don't even have to think of a way to secure this because for 33 pounds, you can buy a lovely discrete bracket that does it all for you. Now you know that we can increase the B2B and we can even increase the battery capacity. Do you really think it stands a chance against the best Victron system in town? And for that, you need to hit this button.